What is up, Sideways fam? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're back in the shop again today. Another hot day here with Nick's Mark IV Supra. Um, we have a lot of stuff to show you guys because he's been a little back behind schedule on getting a bunch of stuff done. He's been so busy and they have so many cars we're trying to get ready for Supras in Vegas and just to keep everybody on schedule. We're very, very, very busy, slammed out the door. It's just kind of never ending. So uh, sorry to be kind of choppy with the videos. I'm trying to stay up and at least continue posting a few times a week for you guys. Hope you guys appreciate it. But let me go ahead and jump right into it real quick and show you guys what we're So at. last time, I don't know if you guys know, uh, this is a 2JZ GE non-VVTi. Uh, NAT setup with a factory W58 transmission uh, running a Clutch Masters FX400, uh, the um, multi friction uh, disc with the stage four clutch. Um, we have all of the front end together now. The intercooler you can see kind of poking through. You see the plastic coming out the bottom. Uh, we actually were able to, in this vehicle, uh, keep all of the OEM paneling and have all of the intercooler piping go through everything it was a pain in the butt um it was definitely not easy what we're gonna have to do right now which i will get into is we're gonna have to cut a section out of the bottom of this little chin right here um on the bottom panel to have the intercooler kind of come through the bottom and then basically we'll be able to get all the paneling bolted in we did buy him some new hardware uh so because all the hardware was super rusted from last time if you don't know i know you guys are going to see a bunch of different things that you didn't see last time on this the throttle cable is in and done uh we just we're just painting the bracket that's why it's not connected right now uh we have an intake system that's basically ventilating the vent back into the intake as a factory car should be we did it in some black, uh, black braided line just to make it look nice and pretty and kind of match the rest of the car uh we did go ahead and uh vent the pcv valve back in uh we have the cat uh charcoal canister all put in like a factory vehicle and we actually ended up finishing all the exhaust work which i will go over with you guys in a little bit after we end up getting the car started um in this video i'll be plugging into it i'll be setting up all the base map stuff and getting everything all ready to go. Uh, this system is a split system, AEM Infinity uh, 506 system. And basically what it is, is we're running a 2JZ GTE uh, oil pump, the modified oil pump. Um, and uh, we are running a um, powerhouse racing billet um, trigger wheel, which is going to be the 12 tooth one for a 2JZ GTE non VVTi. And then that is going to be running just our crank. And then we're using our distributor uh, as our cam sensor with nothing on the internal just for your cam sensor to be able to sense off of the camshaft and the head right here on this side instead of drilling and welding the head and doing all the other crazy stuff on that side which in some cases it does look nicer but in this case we did it kind of like a DIY budget system some people did comment on the last video saying that there is a cheaper way of doing this uh well I mean I'm not really interested this is the way that we're doing it we're running a uh, 1NZ, 1ZZ coil packs with a bracket. Um, this setup should be good for probably 700 horsepower. I don't know if we're gonna ever be hitting that because the customer's expectation was like probably around 450 horsepower, um, reliable. And we also ended up putting, you know, a catalytic converter in the exhaust and stuff like that too. So I know there's stuff out there, you know, by, by all means guys, I'm not selling you guys, hey, you know, you can't run high flow cats, it doesn't work. I just don't, we, we don't typically do that. In this case, we're trying to do a special thing for this customer, try to uh, hit everything on the head of all the things that he wants to do. But let me stop talking about all this stuff because you can kind of see for yourself where we're at and uh, jump into all the other little knickknack stuff that we're doing right now. Let me go ahead and get into the back for the battery location. So interior wise, everything inside is good. Um, in the back of the car right here, what's going on is this. So basically what's going on back here is we have our fuel pump wire running to the ECU that will be triggering our twin pumps, which is why we have twin relays. Obviously for now, you saw last time we're running a Wabro 450 fuel pump. We're running a 450 LPH fuel pump in here, E85 compatible uh, to be able to uh, get him on the flex system. He's only running one pump right now, but he will be able to run two later if he wants to upgrade to the powerhouse racing hanger or modify the factory hanger. You know, that's going to be up to him. So basically, these relays are going to get mounted up here on his little section he has here. His uh, fuel pump circuiting uh, to the pump right here is going to get wired into my relay. And then as far as back here, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're actually modifying the foam here and going to fit a battery back here. Uh, and run all the paneling down uh, up in between the seat and throw all the, every, everything up in there. Um, make it look really, really nice and fresh uh, back here to where nothing's really modified. We can put his OEM spare back in 
Um, this is one of uh, our older customers who just, you know, the expectation is extremely high, so we have to make sure and nail everything on the head. Definitely a little bit different than we normally do it. I would have put the battery back here with a battery box and just kind of mounted it here and made it work because, I mean, it is a hard top anyways. You don't need all the trunk space. And, I mean, it's nice to have the spare, but stuff like that, you know, just we do everything kind of different to every customer, but we've definitely tried to overachieve with this one and do it a little bit more special than any of the other ones that we've done um, just to kind of just try something new, you know. So we're going to be getting rid of the, um, I think this is like a Group 34, probably something like that battery. We're going to be putting a Honda Civic battery and it's a little bit smaller. It's only about this much smaller right here. Uh, I just bought him a brand new battery um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So there's the brand new battery that we just bought. This is the uh, panel that we had back there. Caden went ahead and cut everything out um, to make it all fit. So right now we're going to kind of test fit the battery. It should be like a super, super tight fit. Um, we're trying to get it so tight to where um, we won't even need a battery uh, tie down. I mean, but you can see for yourself, you can probably just lift the battery up. Yep, with the whole panel there. So good job, Kaden. That's awesome. We're gonna go ahead and try to get it in the car and then make sure to start, start running wires. So I just wanna show this. You can see right here for yourself, I'm shaking this really, really hard and uh, it's not moving. So Kaden did an awesome job making that fit. Obviously there will be a little bit of a protrusion right here. Uh, you know, with the seat folded down, you will see like the terminal. Um, but it'll be really cool because what we can do is we can just run the, it down through here, um, the wiring, and then have the wiring come up and snake into here on both sides and then run a rip nut or something of that sort for ground over there, up and in on this side. And uh, that'll be like pretty much super, super nice. And it's cool. He really will be able to retain everything in the trunk. Uh, we'll make it look super, super nice right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish cutting the front uh, paneling, get everything over there situated. Uh, and then we'll come back here after we get the car off the rack and um, get everything all planted. Just wanted to show how badass the trunk came out. I mean, this is as OEM as you guys can possibly get, you guys. Um, the spare fits, the relays are down in the corner, the battery's right there, how, uh, how we need it. And then basically this panel that Caden has over here drops right in um, like it would OEM. Um, and actually fits directly where the OEM stuff is supposed to fit. Let me get it clipped in. So yeah, it's pretty much just as nice as just throwing the carpet over and everything looks like it's factory in the back of the car. So I think he's gonna be really, really happy with this. Doesn't get more OEM than that. Super stock. Okay, it's key forward, got fuel pump priming. Uh, try to crank it. Wow, look at that cold start. Freaking beautiful, guys. They got the powerhouse racing cooling panel in here, too. He did give us the green light on that, so that is super badass. Got the comp turbo, uh, the turbo smart hyper gate already on with the XS manifold and our custom downpipe. Uh, the deep intake manifold got everything on there with uh, our 1000cc FMS injectors. Uh, got our external reservoir, the powerhouse racing fitting that we set up all the time for our right hand drive stuff. On this car, he went ahead and hooked up the EVAP. Um, like I had said earlier, and some of the other stuff is to keep the smell down in the car for the customer because the customer wants the car to be maintained as a, uh, almost like an OEM turbo car. I mean, I know it's heavily modified, but I mean, he wants it to be pretty good on that. Uh, as we discussed earlier, this is how the exhaust sounds with the cat, you guys. Um, this is the high flow cat. Uh, I think it's about a hundred micron. Alrighty guys, so we're inside of Nick's Mark IV Supra. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling the uh, interior part to install his BTI and also uh, do his cluster bypass for his tack. So let me go ahead and get the cluster out. I'm gonna give you a quick little run through of what we're getting done. And then we'll be able to have a tack working in the car and also have a monitor. And then basically interior can go all back together uh, and then we'll be going on the dyno. So uh, let's get this thing done. So a quick rundown if anybody wants to kind of know what the deal is. All you're going to have to do is get this panel out first. It's a bunch of screwdriver bolts that are up on the top right here. There's three connectors, one on that side, two on that side. And then all you're going to do is you're going to be left with this being here. You're going to pop this out. Just be very gentle when you remove it. Then you're going to have a few screws here that are going to be fastening everything in. You're going to have to go ahead and remove the centerpiece, pull your... Uh, your um, ashtray out, lift this up, pull this out, put the shift knob off, then you're gonna go ahead and remove this whole piece. 
Once you're there, you're gonna have to remove the clock. Uh, it's two screwdriver bolts in the back. Once those come out, you will have enough room to be able to install your BTI gauge. Um, so let me go ahead and get this piece out first. We're gonna go ahead and get the BTI installed, run the wire down to the computer down there, and then we'll go ahead and um, get the cluster out, and I'll run you through another quick little video of that. I'm not gonna get too much into this because I already have a video up online on this, but I will show you guys again really quickly. Uh, and we are on a time crunch, so we have to get this done. All right, guys, so as we can see, clock's removed. You can see the three bolts. You can see it's been removed through, through here. And uh, in the back of it, there's three little mounting screws. They're the same as all the rest of the Toyota interior bolts. Then what you're gonna be left with is your BTI gauge. Now, all it does is slide in. You're gonna have a little wing nut, uh, two little wing nuts, and then um, a little bracket to hold it up against it. And then that's pretty much it. It's pretty, uh, very simple. Alrighty, guys, so you have to pull the cluster apart uh, right here and pull the tack out. There's three bolts in the back of it. And then this is how you do the bypass right here. You just solder two wires in, in between the resistor that's right there uh, uh, below the yellow wire. Um, and then basically all you do is you'll drop this back in. All you'll do is drop this back in and bolt it back together and your tack works. Um, this is gonna be for all of your GTE conversions for NA cars. Alrighty guys, so moment of truth. Let's see if everything works. We got the BTI working, that works great. Tack. Sweet. Awesome, totally good to go. Already got everything programmed in here. We got coolant temp, oil pressure, ethanol content, uh, fuel pressure, AFR, battery voltage, all kinds of other different things with this real basic gauge, but they look really, really cool in the car because uh, it's real simple and basic. So glad everything works now. We gotta get some gas, obviously. Uh, let's go. Alrighty guys, so hood's on, car is all back together. Uh, we're gonna start getting everything prepped ahead to dyno this morning. That should probably be a separate video. So uh, yeah, we'll do some uh, roll throughs of the car at the end of it, just to show how it all ended up coming out. And uh, yeah, guys. Alrighty guys, so we're dyno ready. We're gonna be go ahead and get the car outside right now, give her a quick wipe down, uh, check all the fluids, make sure everything's good to go. And we're gonna be getting on to dyno today. So this will probably be a second video, or a third video after this one. I know this video is a little choppy. Like I said, it's been pretty busy over here at the shop, but I wanted to kind of show you guys the finished product. It's super, super badass. You know, if you guys have anything that you guys wanna learn about, anything you guys wanna see in the next video, the next time guys, peace.